Hey y'all, my name's Tyson, and this week, let's focus on Follow Me. Now the Follow Me tool is like some other SketchUp tools in that it's pretty versatile and you can do a lot of different things with it. Also like some other tools, it can be a little finicky. And sometimes the results are what you'd expect and sometimes they may not be. So let's work through a few scenarios that hopefully will give you some advanced ideas on how Follow Me will work uh, and making it work for you. This is not an introduction to Follow Me, so if you've never used the tool before, we do have some videos on that, but we're gonna push your use of Follow Me a little further. The first thing let's look at is this. Typically, when you're using Follow Me, you often have a nice, obvious place to start a Follow Me shape, something like this. So if I click up here for my path, hit Follow Me, which I have as a keyboard shortcut, and click Read. But sometimes you might have something like this where there's not an obvious path. What if we wanted to cut a shape inside here? It's easy to draw a shape on the outside, but we want to draw a shape on the inside. Not a problem. Let's just hide this surface. I have it on a keyboard shortcut. I'm gonna hide it. And the other tip that I wanna make in this example is that you should pretty much always, at least I prefer, to draw a simple rectangle and then draw your more complex follow me shape. It's so much easier to draw on a rectangle than to uh, try and draw especially arcs, but even any of these lines out in 3D space. So I suggest draw a simple rectangle and then you can draw on that shape. Now we can simply select this top surface, hit follow me, and through the edit menu, unhide, or through a keyboard shortcut, you can unhide and that is one way to use Follow Me on a shape that may not have an obvious starting point. All right, let's look at our next example. Uh, this uh, is an example of something I was 3D printing recently, a little storage box, but it's very small, and I wanted to put a chamfer on the base of it. So I'll select this and hit Follow Me and click on this little that looks okay. Oh, nope. You see, it didn't resolve this tight corner. And I suspect we're gonna get the same here. Doesn't like these tight corners on this small shape. So let me undo. And this is a component. And that's important because now we're just gonna make a copy of this. And with that copy, we're gonna scale it up. Now I'm not editing the component, I'm scaling sort of the outer shell of it. But now I'm gonna edit the component, this larger version, and do the same thing. Select this surface, hit follow me. And on the larger version, it does resolve those tight corners, here and here. And this is a trick that's actually useful just any time you're, you're using detail in SketchUp and it doesn't quite work the way you'd expect. You can make your geometry a component, create a much larger scale of it. And if we look at our small version, just by running those operations on that larger version, it also worked here. This is not a guarantee that you can always resolve a very tight corner with Follow Me. You can create a scenario that just is way too tight. But it's worth knowing about that if you are having trouble with small details, try scaling it up. Let's look at our next example. In this case, I'm gonna draw an arc here. Pull this up and 
I were to try and run this shape on this arc, the results are less than spectacular. Because follow me is going to follow the path, the arc we drew didn't resolve into this shape very well. It didn't resolve into it in a purely perpendicular direction. And so it has this overlap. Now, if this is what we needed, we could select some of these surfaces and intersect them and have to clean this up manually, but we could do it. However, if we anticipate that, instead, when we draw this initial arc, what we can do is simply draw a small starting line that is perpendicular. So that one in the green direction, that one in the red. And then when I draw this arc, we have these little segments that should help this geometry resolve much nicer. Let's select this, 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 and this as my path. Hit follow me. And that may be what we had expected initially, but now we know why and how to create some small little perpendicular lines and then draw the arc with those as our aids. In this example, let's say we have this geometry and we're working on the interior. We want to create some trim. Well, simple enough. And we hit follow me. That looks great. And if all we were doing was working on the inside, that may be just fine. But it does change the geometry of our walls. And maybe wanted this trim to be separate. So. Let me undo. We could do a couple things here. Now, one that you might do is simply select this, select these edges, and then I could group those and then run this on the inside. Now that's separated. Now, I didn't have to grab the path and make it part of the group. You could, but for example, if I select the path, delete it. If I select the path from the outside of the shape group, hit follow me, I could still right click on the shape group, say edit group, click, and I still get the nice results the follow me is put inside the group. So this is great. I do want to warn you though, there's a, <laughs> this scenario works. Let me show you a scenario that does not work. Let me undo that again, because typically you might have your walls here grouped separately. So I've got the shape group and I've got the walls group. But you might say, well, it should still work, right? I can select the path, hit follow me. I'm going to right click and close that group and then right click and edit this group and click to finish it. But what I have found, as you see, this is not what we want. When I have tried to do this across groups or components and I get too fancy, it does not do what I would expect. So let me undo that. And instead, I'm going to take this, I'm going to cut it, edit the walls group, and paste it in place. So as long as I'm not closing out of one component, opening another, and jumping across components here, I'm editing the group, so I'm still selecting simple path. You go follow me, right click, edit, and click on this for the results. So this can be something that is useful. Just keep in mind that if you're getting really fancy with jumping in and out of components, it may not work for you. 
The last example let's look at is something that we see often, at least I see it a lot in the uh, 3D warehouse, and that is that people don't realize or don't appreciate the need to change the default number of segments in circles and arcs. So this, again, is an example where I would recommend drawing a simple rectangle, which I did, and then we'll erase what we don't need. Hit follow me, that looks good. Or does it? Maybe I want more detail in the segments around here, but if I look at hidden geometry, there's a whole lot of detail on this lip and that's unnecessary because we've added a lot of unnecessary geometry. Let me back up. I'm gonna take the circle, go to entity info. I'm gonna change this maybe to twice as many segments. And this top arc was the default 12, but maybe it only needs four, maybe five. It's not an exact science how many, just be aware and be a little bit proactive in saying, okay, I don't need that many down here. So I'm gonna leave these both as 12 though. Now let's run this again. I think this looks better, but because that top edge doesn't have as much geometry, even though we increased the segments of the circle, we probably have less geometry overall. Or if it's the similar, we have a better looking bowl. So keep in mind and always adjust your arcs and circle segment count uh, for the best results. All right, that was a mad rush through several examples and tips for follow me, but hopefully something in there was useful to you, something you didn't, uh, weren't aware of before. We try and create these videos every week, so if you are not, please do subscribe, but definitely let us know what you thought of this or if you have some other suggestions, either for this video, tips and tricks for follow me, or for any video that we can create and help you on your SketchUp journey. Thanks as always, see you next time.